Today we are talking about salt because salt is such a common ingredient in witchcraft. There's so many different types of salt. What do all these salts do? Make sure you guys stay tuned to find out. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, welcome to the family. My name is Dina. I am so happy to have you guys here. We are going to talk about all the main types of salt. Yes, there are so many different varieties of salts from around the world, but I want to talk about the main ones that a lot of witches practice with and what is the difference between all of them. So just to give you guys a little bit of a brief history, salt has a lot of background and not just magical practices, but also a lot of religious practices as well. Salt has a big history in rituals of protection, purification, blessings. I don't know if you guys have heard of the superstition of throwing salt over your shoulder but apparently this was believed to undo any sort of bad luck that you may have done by dropping salt because dropping salt was often seen as bad luck. We see this in a lot of different cultures. Christians specifically believed that the devil just kind of hangs out on your left shoulder. So they believed that throwing oh. salt over the left shoulder was supposed to blind the devil and therefore disable him from doing any harm, from, you know, whispering or tempting you into anything. So the first thing I want to talk about is common sea salt because this is something that is very commonly used in witchcraft, but it's also extremely cheap and accessible. So if you cannot get any of the other salts that I list in this video, you can get your hands on sea salt. Sea salt is often used for protection, for purification, for blessings. It is often also used for consecration, which is a term that is not just used in magical practices. It's often used in, you know, religious beliefs and practices as well. Although I'm not going to get into the religious side, but in terms of specifically magical practices, consecration is often used for magical items. So the definition of consecration is the action of making or declaring something typically something sacred. So often witches will do this for, let's say they want to consecrate a wand or it could be a tarot deck or it could be a chalice, anything in their practice. They are declaring what this, this is going to be used for. They're declaring what this magical item will bring them, what it will do for them. It is very commonly done for new items that they're adding to their collection, especially if it's maybe something that has been handled by other people, if it has been touched by other energies, they'll often you know cleanse it and then consecrate it so salt can often be used for this consecration process you can also place sea salt around the house for protection for you know positive good energy keeping out the negativity especially if you have people coming and going in your house you don't know what energy they're bringing into the house then salt is very helpful for this salt is often used in circles circles of protection for different spell work though you do want to be careful where you're putting the salt because salt on the earth is very dangerous for you know the soil balance for the organisms, for the plants and everything. It actually destroys the soil. So though we see this a lot in history of people making, you know, salt circles in the soil or around their house on the earth, it's not really good for the earth and you do want to be careful with that. Sea salt is often used for clearing curses as well. So if someone believes that they've been cursed, they've been jinxed, they've been hexed, whatever it may be, salt is really good for clearing up that energy. Although these things are very rare, I've never been cursed myself, but maybe you have no that you have had really bad luck and it just feels like one bad thing is happening after another, then maybe you want to get your hand on some sea salt and do a practice to clear that energy. And of course, sea salt can also be used in cooking and salt scrubs. So doing that more, you know, kitchen witchery or cottage witchery or house witch or whatever you want to call yourself. There's different more mundane practices that you can use salt for, but you can still incorporate that intention, that magical element element to it as well. The next salt I want to talk about specifically is Celtic sea salt. So Celtic sea salt is unrefined sea salt that can usually be found in coastal France. It is similar to regular sea salt, but it is a little bit more natural. For this reason, many people do believe that it does have stronger protective and cleansing properties. So again, because they're so similar, you can use it for cleansing and protection. You can use it for consecration, purification, protective spells, blessings. And again, this salt can also be used for bath scrubs and cooking as well. All right, so then we get into black salt and there's different types of black salt. And I really want 
want to specify this that some black salt can be consumed but not all black salt can be consumed. The big difference here is which is black salt versus culinary black salt. Culinary black salt can be consumed. Which is black salt on the other hand is often used by combining salt with ashes that have been collected from like a cauldron or a pot that was used for some sort of burning ritual. So you can easily make your own black salt with these ashes. I actually purchased my black salt from an occult shop, but this one was specifically marketed as a culinary black salt. The ingredients are edible. So that is the big difference. Depending on what black salt you get your hands on or what black salt you make yourself, that will determine how exactly you can use this black salt. Generally speaking, black salt is amazing for removing negative energy. If you have some very heavy negative energy that you are trying to clear or heavy energy around you that you're trying to protect yourself from, black salt is the way to go. It is heavy duty for protection, banishing specifically. So if something is lingering, if something is attaching to you and you're having a hard time shaking it, then make sure you use some black salt for that. It also holds the fire energy, that fire element. You can also use the black salt to work with darker energies, darker deities. You can also use it to work with the dark moon. So maybe you're doing some shadow work or dark moon magic, then the black salt could be very effective and helpful for that. If you don't know a lot about dark moon magic and you want to learn more about that, I definitely highly recommend the blood and bones. I'll put a picture on the screen for you guys so you can see what that looks like, but definitely a really good book on specifically, you know, the darker magic, but also just working with the dark moon and the shadow self. Black salt can also be amazing for boundaries. So this could be spiritual boundaries, but this could also be, you know, physical boundaries. Maybe someone is not respecting your boundaries and maybe you're having a really hard time setting those. You could do some sort of spell to really aid in that specifically, or maybe you have someone really negative lingering and they won't leave you alone. And maybe you need a little extra oomph to your spell. You could always dress your candles with this black salt as well, especially if you're doing like a cord cutting ritual which requires the two candles with like a string or twine to, you know, cut that cord, really, you know, create that boundary. You could dress those candles with black salt, or you can even just place the black salt around the candles on the tray that you are utilizing. Black salt can also be used specifically for baneful magics. So obviously you want to be responsible with that type of magic. It's not something that you just kind of want to do whenever. Sometimes what goes around comes around. So what you put out there may eventually come back to you. Not everyone believes that. I personally do believe that. So be responsible in your magic but yes, you can use black salt for baneful magic. Black salt is also very effective for warding. And warding is specifically a protective type of magic where you use physical objects, just regular mundane objects, but they become the anchors of this power. So you can use these points of energy, these mundane items around your house as these protective wards to bring protection to the entire house. And kind of similar to banishing, but also not exactly the same. This is a little bit more extreme, but black salt could also be used for uncrossings. And uncrossings is specifically the removal of curses, hexes, jinxes. So if you feel like you have been cursed or jinxed or hexed by somebody else, then black salt can be used for removing these. Make sure you do your research, really look into how to specifically do these uncrossings because with this kind of magic, you don't really want to mess it up. So the thing to keep in mind with black salt is that it's pretty heavy duty. So not only is it good for preventative measures, but it's good for those emergency measures. It's good to have in your collection if you really need to get rid of some negative energy. And if you want to keep evil out of your house or negative energy out of your house, you can also just place it on your windowsill by the entrance of your door. These are ways to protect the entire house, protect it from negative energy or evil from coming in. So next we're going to talk about Himalayan pink salt. This is another salt that I really like to use in my practice. It carries a very peaceful, loving energy that the other salts do not have. So it's very unique in itself. Himalayan pink salt is pure. It's hand mined. It's from the Himalayan mountains and it's harvested from the ancient sea salt deposits. So Himalayan sea salt has a very soothing and loving energy. For that reason, I really like this sea salt for, you know, peace spells, for finding a sense of calm, for love. It's really good for love spells, but also self-love and just being kind to yourself. Because it has this soothing energy, it's really good for healing. So if you're going through any sort of traumas or grief or anything that you're struggling with, anything from the past that's coming up and it's 
very painful for you and you want to do some sort of healing practice, Himalayan pink salt could be very effective for this. It's also amazing for cleansing and also just promoting positive energy in general. And it is also amazing for scrubs, for baths. So I think this is a really great way to reap those benefits of the Himalayan pink salt is to incorporate it into some sort of bath ritual. I think this is something that a lot of people can benefit from and also find very relaxing. So there's a couple other salts that I want to mention. So I've got yeah a couple less common ones. I've got like a blend to mention and I also have a pseudo salt which means it's not technically salt but you'll understand when I get there. So forgive me if I say this wrong because I have a feeling I'm going to mispronounce one of these words but one of them I want to mention is Hawaiian red alea. Alia, I don't know if I'm saying that right, sea salt. This sea salt is actually often used in love spells, anything love related, whether it is lust, passion, libido, that kind of thing. A lot of cultures will actually use this salt for that reason because of its really red color. There's also fleur de sel, I apologize if my French isn't really good. Uh, it forms at the top of the seawater, it kind of creates this crust and it's often harvested by hand. This salt is quite rare and very expensive, so it's not something that most people work with, but if you can get your hands on it and if you enjoy it, then you do you. It has mostly the same properties as regular sea salt, but it's seen as more powerful. It's like the more rare and natural something is, it's just like it holds a little bit more power. It holds a little bit more oomph to it. We also have salt blends. You can often take salt and blend it in your mortar with another ingredient. So a common one is lavender sea salt, so basically taking dry dried lavender and combining that with just regular common sea salt or you can do it with one of the other types of sea salt that I mentioned. This blend is seen as psychologically healing. Also it's really good for protection magic specifically for like psychic attacks things like that. You can buy lavender sea salt but you can also very easily make your own. And the final salt I want to mention isn't actually salt. It is a pseudo salt. I almost said that word wrong. So we're talking about Epsom salts. Epsom salt is not actually comprised of sodium chloride. It's not even real salt. It's actually hydrated magnesium sulfate and it does not have the same magical properties as the other salts listed. So if you don't have the other salts and you're like, oh, maybe I can just substitute my Epsom salt that's in my bathroom, it wouldn't necessarily work the same way though many witches may use Epsom salts in their magical practice. Often just for like magical baths or like floor washes, things like that. Most people will use it for calming purposes. So if you're really stressed, if you have a lot of negative energy attached to you, then having an Epsom salt bath could be really relaxing for you. Although each salt has some sort of unique ability, mostly salt is seen as protective and cleansing. Salt can universally be used for dressing candles and spells and rituals. It can be used in spell bags, spell jars, things like that. All of these salts can be used for those purposes, except for the Epsom salt. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up because I would truly appreciate it. It does help out my channel. Make sure if you are not subscribed yet that you do go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I post new videos every single week and you guys don't want to miss out on them. I would love to have you be a part of our family magic unleashed. I hope you guys have an amazing day or night whenever you're watching this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.